With me for an exclusive interview is Jonathan Greenblatt. He's the CEO and National Director of the Anti-Defamation League. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me, Brian. Uh, you penned a letter to Fox News Media CEO Suzanne Scott on Friday saying Carlson's been race baiting for years and it's time for him to go. Have you heard back from Fox yet? What has Fox said back to you since Friday? Well, look, it's Sunday morning. We were closed yesterday for Shabbat and we sent this out Friday afternoon. So we haven't heard anything yet. But I'll tell you why if we step back, this is so problematic. And as you pointed out, Tucker Carlson has a history of sanitizing stereotypes and of spreading this kind of poison. But what he did on Thursday night really was indeed, as you put it, a new low. The great replacement theory, as it's known, is this toxic idea that there are a cabal of Jews plotting to overrun the country with immigrants, Muslims, black people, et cetera, and commit what they call white genocide. It is literally, Brian, a staple of white supremacist and extremist ideology. And so when Tucker Carlson literally introduces it to his four and a half million viewers, he's serving as a gateway to one of the most damaging and dangerous conspiracy theories out there. And when I say that, again, let me be clear, this mm -hmm. has real consequences. From 2017, the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, where this phrase was invoked, remember, Jews will not replace us. And then Heather Heyer was mowed down and murdered to the shooting at the Pittsburgh synagogue in 2018, where 11 worshipers were killed, to the shooting the following year in Christchurch, where 51 people were killed, Muslim worshipers, to the murders in El Paso, where 20 some odd Latino people were killed, what, again and again and again. It is the replacement theory that's been invoked by these extremist murderers. So when Tucker Carlson invokes it on his show, when he dismisses it, Right. It is so dangerous. And I think, as you pointed out, the question is really from Fox management to the Fox board to Fox shareholders. How can they countenance their network being used to mainstream the most violent and toxic ideas? As you say, there is a long history of Carlson's uh, race, uh, racist comments. I was about to say racially charged, but there's no reason to beat no. around these bushes. No. Let's put up a That's scroll right. of some examples uh, uh, from the past. Uh, remember, his top writer resigned last year after secretly posting racist and sexist, remar or sexist remarks in an online forum. So there's some other examples on screen here. Uh, I put these up to make the point that Fox has promoted him. They've elevated him. He's the biggest star on the channel, the highest rated host. So what do you actually expect Fox to do? Well, look, Father Coughlin got great ratings in the 1930s with anti-Semitic and racist rants until he was taken down. Right. And, you know, people like Lou Dobbs on the Fox network or Glenn Beck before him got great ratings with their wild, racist and ugly conspiracy theories. So what do we want Fox to do? I mean, first and foremost, Tucker has got to go. Again, I think it is a risk, not just to the corporation, it's a risk to our society to be promoting these, these anti-Semitic and racist myths that literally were used by people on January the 6th to try to not just interfere with the election, but to murder lawmakers. I mean, I think we've really crossed a new threshold when a major news network you know, dismisses this or pretends like it isn't important. This is, has deadly significance. So number one, Tucker has got to go. And then I think secondly, Brian, Fox needs to look at their entire primetime lineup and finally mm. ask themselves, can, does this work? Because at the end of the day, let's acknowledge Fox isn't alone in this. They have advertisers, they have affiliates. Right. There are cable companies who carry their signal. If Fox won't act, it may be time for the advertisers to act. It may be time for, again, the affiliates and the cable companies to act to finally once and for all say that America is simply put no place for hate. Why but is you know this even how a debate goes. anymore, Brian? Tucker just says, I'm talking about voting rights. And then the Murdochs will say, we don't cancel people. They'll say, you're trying to engage in cancel culture. That's what I, I, I can actually well, hear them in my ears because that's exactly what they would say. Well, look, this is not cancel culture. Let me be let me be unambiguous about it. There has always been room for fringe ideas in America. That's a function of our First Amendment. And I embrace that. The question is, 
Does Fox, Fox should take these fringe ideas and put them where they belong, on the fringe, not place them in prime time where they serve as a gateway drug to tens of millions of Americans, right? To literally conscript them into this conspiracy theory of violent white supremacy. We can't afford to look away any longer, Brian. It's incumbent upon, again, from advertisers to the cable companies to the shareholders to yeah. say there is just too much risk in his racism and he's got to go. Look, my worry is always uh, my elderly neighbor who is watching Fox morning, noon and night, uh, who's, who's, a, who's a great gentleman. Uh, but, you know, you think about what millions of people are hearing without realizing that it comes from white nationalists, white supremacist texts, right? Because they're hearing their friends yeah. say it. Tucker is their friend. They trust him. They love him. Right. And, and that's where this is scary. That's where this is dangerous. But I'm at the viewpoint Deeply now where I think dangerous. the Murdochs have given up on it. They think Tucker's in charge. You know, someone needs to remind the Murdochs, they pay Tucker. Tucker's their employee. They're allowed to sanction him. They're allowed to, uh, you know, give him uh, some guidance. But it doesn't seem to ever happen. There's a lack of leadership that is uh, emphasized by the fact that Lachlan Murdoch is basically right. living in Sydney, Australia now. What is that? 15 time zones away from Fox News headquarters in New York. So you were giving them the benefit of the doubt, saying, well, it's only Sunday. They haven't replied yet. But I think they've had plenty of time to reply to your letter if they were going to. Well, I got. Yeah. I mean, look, it's there's a reason why people like Richard Spencer or David Duke you know, praise Tucker Carlson, because indeed he's taken their talking points and literally used his prime time platform to mainstream them for millions of Americans. So as you put it, there are questions. Where are the Murdochs? Where is the where's the rest of the board at Fox? Again, where are the shareholders, the institutional investors, right, who have large positions in the company need to ask themselves, can they really continue to ignore this kind of intolerance? Anti-Semitism and racism has consequences. January 6th made this abundantly clear. The body count is high enough, is high enough, Brian, that finally we've got to take a stand. Jonathan Greenblatt, thank you for coming on. Please let us know if you do hear back from Fox News. Look, look forward to it.